And the first story uh, involves uh, everybody's favorite uh, garbage human being, uh, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Boy, do I hate him. Uh, and I, I feel like a lot of people do. I feel like there's really not a lot of people um, that that find Jeff Bezos to be uh, palatable as a person. Uh, I think everybody is kind of like, well, that guy's a cunt. Uh, and, and and we're and we're going to stick to that and we'll move on. So uh, here's here's what's going on with Je uh, with with Bezos. Right. Uh, Amazon has been getting a, b a bunch of tax breaks and, and all this information is starting to come out about exactly how big of a uh, how big of tax breaks they have gotten over the last couple of years. So since the start of the pandemic, this is important to note, is they've made twenty four billion dollars since the start of the pandemic. As a company, they've they've profited twenty four billion dollars. Right. Uh, now, a bunch of that has gone to. Uh, getting more equipment, getting hiring a bunch of, uh, I guess, uh, more more employees uh, that they're stealing from. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, and um, so Jeff Bezos is on his way to become a trillionaire. In personal profits, he's a, he's on his way to become a trillionaire. That's how much money Jeff Bezos is making. Amazon is one of the very few corporations that has thrived and succeeded throughout the pandemic because everybody went to online shopping, right? Everybody wanted to buy shit online. So even, and now they do have food on their uh, on their website. They have groceries that they sell on their website as well. Um, you know, so and they're pushing prime and all that shit through their acquisition of Whole Foods, which happened in the Trump administration, which basically gave him a monopoly uh, of all things. Now, in in 2019, they made 14 billion dollars. So during a pandemic, when everybody was suffering, Jeff Bezos and Amazon was able to increase their profits by 10 billion dollars from the previous year when there wasn't a pandemic. Uh, so, you know, he really thrived. He really did well. And you would you would think that, you know, oh, shit, we did $10 billion more. Maybe this should go, you know, you, you would assume that it would go down the line and, and, and his employees would benefit from that as well. Uh, but they have not. Uh, and we saw that time and time again, in order to meet all of the, uh, uh, all of the customers' needs, they were uh, running their warehouses without any sort of social distancing. Uh, people, uh, you know, this was uh, Chris. What happened with Christian Smalls uh, over at Staten Island, where he was uh, the, I believe he was the manager. Uh, found out two people had COVID. Found out the company knew that they had COVID. Found out that they didn't give them paid time off to go and recover. Kept them on the line, uh, and you know that spread. And he uh, called them out on it uh you know organized a strike and then they fired him so this is the sort of shit that amazon does in order to protect its profits right so to to get to 24 billion dollars in profits they fire employees that are legitimately looking out for the safety and well-being of not just their fellow employees but also their customers because mm -hmm. you got to figure if if uh somebody on the line gets covid and they're bag, you know, putting products into boxes and so on and so forth. Yes, uh, the we 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 now know that SARS-CoV-2 does not stay on um, uh, inorganic surfaces for very long, and so on and so forth. But there there's still a possibility of transmission that can happen uh, because somebody on the line uh, has COVID and and you know transmits it through uh, through the products that they're putting into boxes. That's a possibility. So why risk that, right? Because profits are more important than public health when it comes to a corporation that wants to make infinite profits with infinite consumption on a planet with limited resources. Uh, really the snake eating itself and the failure of capitalism in and of itself as, a, as an unviable economic system. So when it comes to corporate taxes, Trump decreased the corporate taxes. I think it was like 35 percent. Not that any corporation ever paid 35 percent of their profits in taxes or anything. Uh, but Trump decreased it to 21 percent. And uh, if that was the case, then Amazon would pay roughly four point one billion dollars. 
Uh, but the report showed that they only paid $1.8 billion in 2020. And this is already after they got a tax break uh, the prior year of $2.3 billion, right? Uh, and in three years total, 2018, 2019, 2020, they paid a total of 4.3% in taxes. That's it. 4.3% in taxes. The rest of us have to pay a much higher percentage, and the rest of us don't make anywhere near the same amount of money as fucking Jeff Bezos, right? But we have to pay a fuck ton more taxes. So altogether, over the course of three years, uh, they made $44.3 billion, and they only paid $1.9 billion altogether in three years. And a majority of that seems like it's coming from 2020. Right. Like after they got exposed and after the people found out that he's barely paying any taxes at all, the corporate the, Amazon as a company is barely paying any taxes at all. Uh, he he got caught and he was like, all right, I'll 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 pay something to shut you assholes up. And so he did. And a majority of his a majority of what he paid in taxes over the last three years came specifically from 2020 itself. So, first of all, I think corporate taxes need to go back up, right, to uh, to, to, to 90%, which is what it was under Eisenhower. Uh, and this is something I do want to, like, do a lot more research about. Like, Eisenhower is one of those presidents that I would like to, to, to do a deep dive on. It is like Eisenhower, Jimmy Carter, those are, like, two people that uh, you could probably do a good deep dive on. Like, not a lot of people know about them. And just for kicks, maybe Gerald Ford... <laughs> Just to see if we kind of did anything other than pardon Nixon. Uh, but yeah, Eisenhower, uh, I, I think, is a, is a bit of a complicated figure. And I would like to, you know, learn more about him and share what I learn about him. Uh, but Eisenhower had 90 percent corporate taxes. And because uh, he knew where the funding for social programs and infrastructure were going to come from, we're going to come from the corporation said use those things that take advantage of social programs and infrastructure, you know, Amazon can't ship anything uh, on the ground or in the air without inf like without roads and shit, but he insists on not having to pay his fair share for it. You can't have infinite wealth, infinite growth. If you know, the roads that you need to drive on fucking deteriorate. Not only that, but here's here's part of the way that he got away with with some of his tax breaks is depreciating assets, right? So, uh, and the and the reasoning behind this is so the depreciation the, the depreciating assets like like my computer would be a depreciating asset because from the second I get it, uh, it's being used and therefore uh, the value of it the market value of it starts going down because there's always going to be something new on the market. Not just that, but the wear and tear of it. Uh, makes it a depreciating asset, so I can get I can get certain amount of money back based on how much I use my computer uh, for my work, which is all the time, right? I use my computer all the time for work, so I would get I would be able to get a decent chunk back in terms of depreciating assets. My car, your your car would be another uh, depreciating asset there, uh, things like that. But what they're what they're saying is depreciating assets um, is you know machinery that you use, technology that you use. Uh, you know, uh, vehicles uh, that you use in, in your business. So, you know, Amazon has these commercials talking about how they're going to make their cars carbon neutral by uh, 2050, which at that point, you know, that's that's great. That's great that you're going to be carbon neutral by 2050 when the world will be a, a smoldering uh, lava pit. That's That's fun. When... When the only uh, the only organisms that can legitimately be alive on this uh, planet are the bacteria that live uh, in volcanoes. Um, when when those are the only organisms that can survive, Amazon will be carbon neutral by then, which is great because those organisms are also going to need an Amazon Fire Stick. So, because uh, what are they going to entertain themselves with? How are they going to watch Netflix? Duh. 
but those those vehicles would be depreciating assets. Now, what the what the problem is is that they're giving uh, more money back to Amazon in terms of depreciating assets than what the depreciating asset is actually worth. So they're claiming like these machines are depreciating faster than they're actually depreciating. You know, if that makes sense. Um, so they get a they get a much bigger tax break. So in 2018, uh, being that this was one of the ways that they were able to 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 get tax breaks, they actually had a negative tax rate. I think the government ended up giving them a fuck ton more money. It was like negative 1.2 uh, percent is what they paid on taxes. So why would they do something like this, right? Why, why would, why would uh, Amazon and um, Jeff Bezos get all these tax breaks? Well, don't forget, Jeff Bezos has uh, a lot of contracts with the State Department. He has a lot of contracts with the with the CIA. He partners with companies like Palantir, who are known to cre create facial recognition software uh, that Amazon uses to deport uh, undocumented immigrants that they have hired to pay less than minimum wage or or less than what they offer to everyone else uh, to to basically uh, exploit their labor. Uh, by uh, holding them hostage by virtue of them being an undocumented immigrant, right? They'll be like, oh, well, uh, you, we'll pay you 10 bucks an hour instead of 15 or 20 that we pay everybody else. And if you have a complaint with that, well, I got, you know, I got ICE's number right here. I got the U.S. Customs Enforcement Agencies right here. So, you know, immigrants can't be at the negotiating table because uh, they would use their immigrant status in and of itself as a leverage point. So these people are easy to take advantage of because of that, because of the way the United States immigration uh, system works. So they've essentially, and, and this is something that that like Trump used to do that people chastise Trump for, is he would hire undocumented immigrants. They would do a bunch of the work, and before he would pay them, he would call, uh, you know, U.S. Customs and and so on and so forth. So basically doing the same thing. Uh, Bezos also owns the Washington Post, so he gets to control the narrative of whatever he wh whatever he wants the narrative to be, right? Uh, so, but so in that term, he's very useful to the intelligence community because he gets to control the narrative. Uh, he's improving facial recognition software, uh, and that's part of the the uh, the charm of the depreciating assets and the way that they pitch it, the way that these people that give the corporate loopholes pitch it is, well, we're encouraging corporations to innovate a lot more, to make things more streamlined, uh, you know, to, to make consumerism a little bit easier is how is how they pitch it. So very, very useful. For, for the intelligence community. Very, very useful for Patriot Act 2.0, which, thanks to January 6th, is being implemented uh, on a grand scale, right? Uh, on, on this channel alone, if you, if, you, if you watch my YouTube channel, they deleted videos that, had, that they claim had something to do with me lying about Joe Biden being the president, which was untrue. Uh, and, and, you know, Amazon is going to help them with that. Amazon is going to help them with facial recognition software. Amazon is going to help them uh, with collecting data using Alexa. If you plug your Alexa in, there's a good chance that it's, it's, it's uh, uh, collecting data nonstop. Right? That's what they do. Now, Jeff Bezos did step down as the CEO of Amazon recently. I think about a month ago, he stepped down. And he's still going to be on the executive board, but he's taking, like, a background role, right? Uh, which, to me, just, to me, signaled, oh, he's going to work closer with state departments and intelligence communities and develop uh, surveillance technology like Alexa and the Ring, right? And if you don't know what Ring is, Ring is the doorbell that has a camera attached to it, so you can keep an eye on your uh, on your front porch or your yard or what have you. Uh, but they're also selling that information to uh, law enforcement agencies, to police departments. So at any point in time, uh, they will uh, they they will just watch your neighborhood, like they can just keep an eye and surveil your neighborhood. And Amazon is going to help them improve that technology. Right, because that's what we're craving for. We're craving for improvements in doorbell technology. Um, so, 
and look, I get it, right? There's there's times where you're going to need that. There's there's porch bandits and so on and so forth. But you wouldn't have to worry about porch bandits if you actually had a good sense of community in the neighborhoods. If everybody wasn't, you know, we got to stay within our white picket fence and not talk to, uh, I don't give a shit, whatever the neighbor does is up to the neighbor. No, if we were a little bit more of a community, uh, if we took care of each other uh, and 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 had that sense of uh, uh well, community, uh, I know I've been saying that word a lot, but if we had that bond, we wouldn't have to worry about porch bandits because, you know, if somebody was going to take uh, one of my packages from my porch, maybe with the neighbor across the street or my next door neighbor or somebody would be like, hey, we saw this guy. Here's a description of him. This is what happened. And now we, you know, can f f file a report or what have you. But since we don't have that, we have to depend on surveillance technology, which is going to be used for nefarious means. Plus, I think uh, Amazon realized that having a trillionaire as their CEO is kind of a bad look when most of their employees need to be on welfare and food stamps. And basically what he's doing is graduating from like a pseudo villain, like he was like kind of a super villain, like he was he was kind of a, an asshole uh, and, you know, like he was kind of a super villain. And now, like, he's going to work with the State Department and take a background role in developing technologies. Like, he's graduated to supervillain. Like, he's got there. Like, he's hit that mark. You know? That's what he did. He's now a full-blown fucking supervillain. Now, uh, the FTC has ruled that Amazon uh, has stolen, stolen, 61 million dollars from their workers and this isn't this isn't you know I, I i get it there's there's some conservatives and neolibs that come out and they say oh well you can't claim that it's stolen when these people are uh just just trying to earn an income you know they're they're just trying to build and develop their company and they got to take what they got to take and if that means that their employees have to get paid minimum wage or if that means that they have to hire part-time workers so that they don't have to cover benefits uh for the sake of the corporation that that's how it's got to be blah 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 uh and that argument is bullshit because they don't ever make that argument uh when a small mom and pop store uh wants to do something similar to Amazon. They're trying to grow and they're like, boy, we can't pay our employees. They go, oh, well, if you can't pay your employees a, 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 a living wage or a minimum wage or what have you, then maybe you shouldn't have employees. Maybe you shouldn't have a corporation. Maybe you're not good at business, right? They all kind of, and it should apply to a company like Amazon as well, right? Oh, if you can't uh, pay your employees the, the right amount, then maybe you shouldn't be a corporation. But where they actually stole the money from, $61 million got stolen from uh, workers of Amazon, is uh, when they stole workers' tips, specifically the drivers, right? The, the, the folks in the prime vans that drive around and deliver your packages. Well, they get tips they, or, or they can get tips uh, through, the Amazon, um, through the Amazon app. And the claim is that, uh, you know, it's 18 to 25 an hour to, to be a driver, to be a delivery person. And then you get tips on top of that. Um, now, that sounds really great, right? In terms of like, holy shit, you're paying more than minimum wage and, and you're take it seems like you might be taking care of your employees, but you're skimming tips. Not just that, but I bet these employees are also part-time. I would wager to bet that most of these employees are part-time. So their tips are actually what helps them um, get enough money so that it's it's worth it and it's kind of like having a full-time job. And Amazon went into the app and stole tips from their workers. And not... And what's crazy about it is like this is not just cheating the workers; it's also cheating their customers who are doing something in in like they feel like they're doing something nice by by tipping the the delivery delivery driver, right? Especially during a pandemic, I bet that they were like 
fuck, I bet this person, they're, they're essential. I, I'm being told that these are frontline workers and we should respect them and so on and so forth. And I should tip them a little bit more. Um, and and I, I want to feel generous. I want to give uh, when I have something more and this other person does not. So I want to feel like I'm doing something good. And what, what ends up happening? Their tips are going uh, to the bosses. I worked at a coffee shop and I'll tell you something is, is the ship supervisors and the managers not allowed to get tips, but the ship, ship, ship supervisors, and the managers were getting paid a lot more than just your average barista. Right? Like I, I think I was getting nine bucks an hour plus tips at Starbucks when I, when I left, like that was the highest I, I, I got up to when I worked there. But I know like ship supervisors were making uh, 12 to 15 um, and, and the salary for a manager was, was pretty good to the point where like the tips weren't particularly necessary. Um, so in this case, the tips are necessary. They do help. And besides, if you're going to be a fucking trillionaire, why do you need t to steal tips from your workers? Unless you're just a full blown fucking super villain that's driven by greed and you think like by liquefying cash and injecting it into your body is the only way you can be alive. Like unless you're that level of an asshole. I don't see a reason why you would do something like this. Now here's, here's the, the, the other part about this uh, is the media is corporate media. I should specify here uh, is corporate media has basically been, um, running defense as the mint press news article says they've been running defense none of them use the word steal nobody's using the word steal in their in their titles and that's exactly what they did they stole they stole money from the workers they didn't they didn't uh they weren't withholding they weren't doing like look at look at the words that they use new york times amazon to pay fine for withholding tips from delivery drivers no they stole tips from delivery drivers they used the app to steal the tips right but but they're not oh they withheld it for you know there might have been some tax benefits maybe they were trying to help the workers they withheld it for the workers uh, benefit, but it turned out it wasn't benefiting them, and there were some shady things happening. But who knew, right? Amazon couldn't have known. They're but look at the they're like creating jobs and employing people. What a bunch of nice folks, huh? Uh, look at this one, Los Angeles Times. Amazon will pay sixty one point seven million dollars to delivery drivers after withholding tips. Again, withholding tips. Uh, Amazon. It's, we were just holding on to it for a little bit, you know, to help them out, you know. Let them sort out their finances, and then it's like, boom, look at this. A shit ton of tips just showed up. And isn't that a fun thing? It's, it's, it, it, but what Amazon just did by withholding these tips is like, it's like when you accidentally find a 20 in your pocket. You know, it's like, oh man, I didn't know this was there, but you were like withholding that 20 from yourself. You know, and then you and then you found it. So it's like you you returned that 20 back to yourself, but it's exciting. And that's what Amazon is doing. That's what New York Times and LA Times are saying. Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, this is from my city. Amazon agrees to multi-million dollar settlement for withholding driver's tips. It's not a multi-million dollar settlement. It's what the fuck they owe them. It's not a settlement. Don't make it sound like this is a lawsuit negotiation. That these all these greedy workers were, were trying to ream the good old corporation. That's not what the fuck is going on. Here's another one from The Independent. Amazon ordered to pay $61.7 million fine for withholding driver's tips. It's not a fine. It's giving them what they fucking owe. Stop calling it. That's not a fine for withholding shit. A fine for withholding would be if they paid back the $61 million, which they absolutely fucking should. And then on top of that, uh, they, they were uh, they, another $100 million had to be paid to all their drivers. That would be a fine. This is just giving back what they stole. Because they got fucking caught. Washington Examiner. Amazon to pay $61.7 million settlement after FTC says it withheld some tips. You know, the FTC said that they stole tips. In total, Amazon stole nearly one-third of driver's tips 
to pad its own bottom line, said FTC Commissioner Rohit Chopra. He uses the word stole, and corporate media keeps saying shit like uh, withheld some tips. Some tips. It's $61.7 million of it. Washington Post calls it shortchanging. Courthouse News shorting, keeping, pocketing. No, they stole it. Call it what the fuck it actually is. The people that claim that New York Times, LA Times, The Examiner, The Post are all credible news organizations are lying to themselves, just like Amazon is lying to their workers about withholding tips. Perhaps the worst offender was business and tech news site ZDNet, whose headline was Amazon will pay $61.7 million to settle flex driver tip dispute with the FTC, which obscured the matter into a foggy, very technical sounding financial dispute. It's not a financial dispute. They stole money from their workers. They have to pay back the employees, and I think they should be uh, they should be uh, charged an astronomical fine. They should be charged twenty five percent of their bottom line, and then they should give all of the uh, they should distribute that twenty five percent of their bottom line to all of their employees equally. That's a fine, and that's what they should get. The FTC should find them that much fucking money for 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 stealing tips from their drivers. This is just wage theft through and through. There's really no other uh no other fucking explanation for it. It's just wage theft. If the average citizen did this to a corporation, where where they they might have stolen some money from a corporation, they would be spending life in prison. But instead, Jeff Bezos is going to get closer to becoming a trillionaire because he stole tips from his fucking drivers to pad his fucking bottom line, not see a day in prison, and get a bunch of CIA contracts to spy on us. This guy is a dystopia machine. And and, it can, and he's not the only one, right? I mean, a lot of corporations do this. On average, there's a study, there's a 27 stu 2017 study that came out uh, that said that uh, workers were on average losing sixty four dollars per paycheck, which annually uh, came out to eight billion dollars lost from the working class. Eight billion dollars lost from the working class, and the media stays silent on all that shit. They'll run defense for an asshole like Jeff Bezos, but they'll stay quiet as uh, as 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 workers around the world are losing money. Wages stay stagnant. They're not hiring full time employees. They're skirting labor laws, and the media is like, "But no, nope, it's just with they're withholding hours, you guys." For their benefit, it's just, you know, the working class are dumb and they don't know what to do with money or time. So we have to withhold some of it so that they don't use up all of it. That's how they fucking treat the working class. Absolute nonsense. I say they should pay 90 percent in taxes, right? Their taxes should go up to 90 percent. Uh, they should lose a quarter of their bottom line for stealing from employees. And then Jeff Bezos should go to prison for stealing money. That would show that this is a fair system. But because none of those things are happening, we live in an unfair system. We live in a broken corporate oligarchy. We live in a failed state. That's what that's what this country is now. Pop over to look at some comments. Uh, Holly, uh, Holly, thanks for hanging out, Holly. I know you had to pop out here. Uh, theft of service is 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 exactly correct. It is a uh, it is a theft of service. Uh, over on Rockfin, Fred says the uh, corporations got interest on the withholding too. Thank you, VM. Uh, yes, 
Yeah, I, I bet I bet they got they got some kind of breaks for 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 withholding these tips and all that sort of stuff. I mean, they're they're going to get corporate. They're they're going to get uh, they're going to have more loopholes. I'm sure they did this because they they are um, they're they're getting uh, money back in taxes for withholding uh, or stealing, not withhold stealing money from their employees. They should be ordered to pay double what they stole. Yeah. That should be the start. And then the rest of it should be you lose a quarter of what you made. Fuck you. That way that you really want to you really want to really discourage this kind of behavior. You got to hit them hard financially hard. Jack up their taxes and hit them with the fine, which is 25 percent of what they made the pre previous year. This bullshit of, well, we'll we'll, we'll make them pay a million dollar fine. No, they stole 61 million. A million is not enough. So I've had wages stolen from me at fast food restaurant, found out it was happening at a, a different one that was in the area. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, see, this is the thing. It's like, I'm, I'm not surprised that, that corporations do this. But but the 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 reality is they get away with doing it uh, when when they should be uh, should be reprimanded. And, you know, and, and this is another proof that we live in a corporate oligarchy when corporations get away with stealing money from their employees. And, you know, the FTC is like, give it back, you naughty scamps. Huh? Get out of here, Jeffy. I, w I would tossle your hair if you had any, you silly goose. Oh, man, what a good this guy. He's a goose, isn't he? What a silly goose. Total bullshit. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content you can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.